Hey, what's up everybody? This is Josh, aka Ildris, with GGTV, bringing you a Protoss vs Zerg matchup today. Uh, I want to get this out there to show everybody a very unconventional play from the Zerg uh, in the PvZ matchup. Uh, it's actually one of my games from Ladder. I'm, I'm a gold player, so uh, it's, not, it's not Masters or anything like that. So, I just want to get into it real quick, kind of go over what I feel I did well, what I did not do well, what I feel the Zerg player did well, what he did not do well, and kind of want to focus on what the Zerg should have done because uh, what he did do allowed me to counter his play very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and we'll get right to it. Also, this is probably, this is the first time that I have done a cast like this and uh, this is my seventh try, I think, at this time. So it hasn't been going entirely smooth, but we'll get there. Okay, so we've got me in the bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to get this go ahead and load it up. And I'm actually going to put it at two times speed. It's a 25-minute game, and uh, there's not that much to cover. So just want to get it going kind of quick. Um, but at the very beginning of that, you saw that I did kind of an unconventional probe split. It was something I saw a, a GM player on stream not too long ago do, where they use F1 and then click the individual mineral patches with each probe. Uh, the way he did it was a lot faster than the way I did it. So uh, I, I typically use the select all, click mineral patch, select three, click on a different mineral patch. Didn't do it that time. I'm going to continue trying with this F1 approach, though, and see how that works out. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and throw down this pylon. I know that since I'm playing Ozark, I'm going to go ahead and get a Forge Fast Expand going. I had actually predetermined before the matchup began that I was going to go into Immortals because so many players at this level just love to go Mass Roaches. Uh, you should not do that, however. You shouldn't go ahead and predetermine what kind of composition your army is going to be before you get any scouting information. That's not the way you want to play. But... Uh, being a lower level player that is what I did okay so I got my scouting information I saw that he put down a pool he's only just taking that extractor I didn't see that earlier I put my probe down here to look for the secondary hatch however it doesn't come so I get scared and throw down this cannon I did not see these zerglings coming out from this probe up here so I have no idea they're coming now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, working on my wall but I want this cannon up first because I'm afraid, not of a six pull or anything like that, of course, but of the, exactly this. I'm afraid of that early aggression with circlings. However, I realize that I can't get any units out in this wall. I didn't build it properly. So I don't have a space for a zealot or anything like that to sit here so I can get units out later. So I cancel it. Turns out to be a mistake. Uh, my cannon, however, does do a lot of damage and gets... You know, so there's only one drone and one circling left, and I'm able to just mop it up with my probes. So uh, I did lose some mining time from that, and I I lost that cyber core timing, but that's not a huge deal at this point in the game. Um, he's just going to continue streaming in zerglings down here, trying so hard to get by, and once he realizes he can't, and once I realize that he's going to continue this, I'm building a second cannon. I'm not going to let him, you know, just keep doing this without some kind of defense. So he, he's brought even more lings in. He's taking out these rocks just kind of preemptively for later in the game, I suppose. Uh, and then he's going to go ahead and bring all these zerglings in and try and take out these two buildings here. And, of course, once he realizes that he can only fit, uh, I think it's five, yeah, f no, six, six zerglings over this, this uh, cyber core. He's just not going to be able to kill it quick enough with those two cannons going off, plus a stalker. So he should have pulled back way early. He should not have lost all that. So he's already lost two attempts with a lot of zerglings. And I should realize at this point that it puts me really far ahead, but I'm not thinking that way, honestly. I'm, I'm just so worried about that early aggression that I'm just trying to get this economy going and keep my wall intact. I'm actually... Assuming that he's morphing banelings out here, because typically that's the Zerg response, is if you're going to do a one base pressure like that and you can't get in with those early lings, you just go baneling and then bust through and then 
you know, get the remaining banelings and your zerglings up into the mineral lines and just wipe out the economy. That's, that's an easy win. Um, but he's not doing that. Of course, I don't know that. I don't know what he's doing because he has me walled in like this, so I just have no information whatsoever. All I do know is that he is not taking this natural expansion. So I'm assuming that he's taking one of these other expansions out here. Which he hasn't, of course, and it's put me so far ahead. Uh, I actually have a supply lead over a Zerg when he knew that I was going Forge Fast Expand. So that's probably the biggest makes mistake in this entire game is that the Zerg, once failing his one base pressure, does not expand. He just wants to continue this one base pressure without going into Banelings, without uh, taking into Mutas or anything like that that'll get past this wall. He just wants to just keep bringing in all these Zerglings, and he did throw down a Roach Warren. There's the Roaches now. Uh, which was just a poor response. Because you're not, I mean, you're going to have an easier time, of course, with all those Lings plus Roaches to get this wall down. But with my army here plus the two cannons, there's just, it's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work out well in his favor. He should have expanded, maybe even double expanded at this point. Uh, and in my case, I should have got this uh, observer out so much sooner. I should have, you know, one observer on the way to his these different bases up here, searching for his expansion, and another one already being produced. I didn't. Um, I even went just one observer, and it just kind of sits here for a while, and then I got that immortal out. Also, you'll notice that I'm floating just a ton of money, which is a very bad play by me. And it's mainly due to being a lower level player. Uh, I've only recently come into gold, and I'm so used to just doing kind of one base play that focuses so heavily on all ends rather than macro games that I'm not used to having this two base economy. So I should have had more production structures. I know this, this other gateway should have, or this other gateway here should have come up sooner. Um, I should probably have thrown down another robo if that's the way I was going to go. Uh, I should have had that scouting information so much sooner. Um, I am getting my... I should have went double forge too. Or double forge. You know, with all the economy I'm getting here. Um, but I am building up my army. I am getting upgrades. Uh, I did build that cybernetics core up here so I can take this one out now. Uh, I, I want to expand. I have so much money that, you know, there's no reason not to expand. Except that I don't know where he is. I just have no scouting. That's why it's so important in this game uh, to know what your, your opponent is doing at any given time. But I do finally feel like I'm safe enough with this army to move out and I take down that cyber core, but then I close it back up with another gateway just so that if I am at a position later on, he can't just roll right in and just completely roll over everything I have. The Zerg is just continuing the same thing he's done all game. Um, Zerglings and Roaches. And he's sitting on this, my third right now. He's probably assuming that I would have had mine up by then, but because of that wall off, I did not. So I'm sending my stalker up here just to check it, assuming that he might have like one zergling waiting for me right here just to prevent my probe from putting down on that nexus. Turns out his whole army's up here. Now of course I don't know that's his whole army. If I did, I probably would have moved out and just won the game right now. Um, I'm still playing so scared. Uh, and you'll notice that I actually throw down those, those scared cannons in my mineral line, both my natural and my main, just because I'm as a Protoss player, especially you know low league Protoss player, I am terrified of Mutalisks. They are the scariest thing, in my opinion, in the Zerg army. Um, you'll notice here that when I did see his his army up here, I went ahead and split up my uh, my own army, putting my tankier units up front and keeping my stalkers and sentries kind of towards the back and I did warp in another round of sentries just so I could force field off this ramp because I'm assuming that attack is coming even though it doesn't uh, continuing my upgrades 
trying to make sure I don't get supply blocked. I do a few times, I know. And actually now is basically one of the times. Um, I am getting Colossi out now. I don't think I ever get Thermal Lance, though. But uh, I'm prepared for what I know he has, which is those Lings and uh, Roaches. Now, however, it would be a bad, 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 bad thing if he had gone, like, in Festerling and maybe thrown in some units. Like, he should be on four bases at this point, if not five. Um, this Zerg, however, has only just got this second base up almost 20 minutes into the game, which is just so bad. And it's so unorthodox for the Zerg, too. And when I'm moving out like this, I should really have my Colossus on a separate hotkey just because of the way they walk. You'll see, you'll notice right here, or no, I guess it's not right here. I go ahead and come up here to take out this base first. And I'm assuming he is on four bases at this point. And I'm assuming this is his fourth, and then he just has these other two bases here. My plan is to just go in and wipe those all out, just going from left to right. And since he notices that my army is out of position, he go ahead. He goes ahead and streams in his own army to take out on that wall. All I can warp in at the moment is three zealot or three stalkers, rather. And he goes after my cannons with these zerglings, which is probably a mistake. Instead of going after my probes, it gives me. And I am panicking right now, by the way, of course. Uh, but it does give me enough time to select my probes, get my army in first. I select my probes and then pull them out. You always want to click on the mineral patch up in your main so that they move through units. That'll help. I get my main army in though. Take out his uh, his army. Just completely wipe it out. No problem. He does get my nexus. He does get a gateway. Uh, a couple cannons and some pylons. But that's all. And while that was going on, however, I did miss it. But I did warp in a sentry up in the top up here just to force field off my ramp so he couldn't bring up his units and actually get to my tech structures up here so after that engagement I finally get my third down and I get my army ready uh, I want to get unsupply blocked first before I move out I want to get this nexus up again and I'm not entirely positive whether or not I should have with so few minerals remaining at this spot it may have been better if I had just expanded down here instead when I get my main army, go up to the tower just to get vision real quick. Uh, I want to come back up here. I assume that he has his fourth, what I what I believe is his fourth, uh, up and running again. And it turns out that it is not. I see that. So I'm going to go ahead and march over here. And this is why I say you should put your Colossus on a different hotkey. Like if he had had his main army right here protecting uh, a base, he could have easily sniped those three Colossi. Um, so I notice that he doesn't have this base either, and I'm, I'm just completely baffled at this point. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but I am getting my army in. There's no base here still. So get these Colossus up, blink up to the top, and find out that this is all he has left. And just go to work on his tech structures. I get the GG from there. Um, that's basically the game. So... The biggest thing to take away from this whole match is, as a Zerg, if you're going to do a one base into against a uh, Forge Fast Expand Protoss, go Banelings. Use a Baneling bus to get into the wall. However, uh, even that may not be the best idea. I would personally expand. If you find out your one, your one base pressure is not going to work, expand. Just go take your natural. Uh, if you if you scout well enough, and you find out that that Protoss isn't getting a huge army, that he's working on his own economy, uh, expand again. Take a third. Um, get your own economy going. It'll get you caught back up. And as a Zerg, you always want to have that economy edge. You want to have uh, the supply edge over the Protoss, uh, and having the better economy allows that. So. Um, my biggest mistakes were uh, not scouting. I did not get enough scouting off. It was absolutely awful on my part. I had no idea almost the entire match what he was doing. And that caused it to go from a match that should have lasted you know, 10, 15 minutes into a match that lasted 25. 
because of him staying on one base and uh, losing all that, all that early pressure, uh, I would I would have been able to just go in and wipe out what he had left once I got you know just a, a small initial army together. Uh, I didn't. So my main takeaways are if I'm going to build robos, get those observers out there. Uh, if not, find another way to get that scouting information. Just get the scouting information that you need. Um, I need to build my walls better. Uh, I need to use more production facilities if I'm on two base. I need to learn how to macro uh, two base a lot better than I did. Um, I think that's everything. So if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them below. I'll get back to you if I can. Uh, I plan on bringing a lot more content uh, very soon. I actually have a 2v2 partner now, which I'm very excited about. We've been playing quite a bit. We're still in the Bronze League, so <laughs> don't get too excited. Um, we are working our way up. Uh, we're getting a lot better each time we play. Uh, I'd love to bring some of those 2v2 videos to you. Uh, maybe even you know get some strategy discussion going because 2v2s are a whole new arena for me. Um, other than that, I think that's all. This is Josh with GGTV signing up. Peace.